How are you today? I'm good in yourself, Paul. Good, and so, thank you so much for you know, being able to join us in studio. I know it's not easy under COVID and everything like that. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Just to introduce who Marco is, because many of you are going to be familiar with his works, and as we unpack one of his large-scale um, installations, you, it's going to ring a bell with you. But many of you probably might not know who Marco is or the person, the artist behind those works. So Marco is really well known for his large public art installations, large sculptural works, and these can be found in a number of our public spaces across South Africa, as well as in a number of our private collections. Not only in South Africa, but he's also well sought of in Europe, in the United States, with some of his works in illustrious collections, such as the Smithsonian uh, Museum of African Art. A bit about who Marco is. Born in Johannesburg in 1970. You my age. What can <laughs> I say? <huh? laughs> We're getting on. <laughs> getting on. Both turned 50 this year. And he graduated with a distinction in fine art from the University of the Witwatersrand in 1992. Participated in a number of solar exhibitions won numerous awards, and I'm really proud to say also a previous winner of the Absolute Atelier Art Competition. So for any young budding artist out there, we also hope that um, through our discussion with Marco um, today, you're going to be inspired, and that will encourage you to enter the future or future La Atelier Art Competitions. So, Marco, a bit about... Um, the particular work that we're going to be focusing on today, and um, people are probably familiar with it, and we're going to just um, keep them a bit in suspense, which particular work this is, but, and that's the work at, um, in the Natal Midlands, just outside Howick, known as Release, uh, at the Mandela Capture Site. Can you just, you know, introduce us a bit to to the work, and how did you get involved in this particular project? Well, it's, it's quite a long story, um, and uh, not one that you can package very easily. Um, uh, where to begin? I, I think it really started in um, uh, 2004, 2005. Uh, uh, quite an epic uh, journey. What happened was I um, met the architect, Jeremy Rose. We were both on the... Um, professional team for the Freedom Park. Um, I was the only artist on that team. And uh, Jeremy became familiar with my work and was very interested in some of my very early sculptural works in, at that point in time. And just inter interrupt yes. maybe, sorry, Marco, just for people, the Freedom Park, that's just outside? The Freedom Park in Pretoria. Pretoria, yeah. okay, fantastic. Uh, South Africa's uh, monument to freedom. Yes. That's right. Um, and... Uh, we were working on that project together and they, uh, an opportunity came up for a, uh, a, a monument competition uh, mm -hmm. for Mandela and uh, uh, we worked on that together and through that came up with the concept which later became a release at the Nelson Mandela ca capture site. Um, for various reasons that I don't really want to go into now, we, we, even though we were shortlisted for that competition, we decided to withdraw from okay. it. And it seemed that that was the end of that project. It was a big, big lesson over years about um, not letting go of something. Mm. Uh, Christopher Till, uh, the, the director of the uh, Apartheid Museum and of the capture site, uh, was very intrigued. Uh, he's a good friend of Jeremy's, mm. and very intrigued by the concept, and he ended up championing um, uh, the pursuit of, uh, of a home for that concept. Um, and it really was a concept um, from 2005 till about 2010. Uh, I always, it never went further than 3D models and, 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 and visuals, but I had a good sense that we could do it, even though it was very challenging on many levels. Uh, fast forward a bit to 2010, 2011, um, uh, Christopher Till, um, thought about the capture site, the, the, the site mm. on the R103 when Nelson Mandela was captured in 1962 and thought that this could have potential. And only from then, uh, with Jeremy and, and, and Chris um, 
putting the concept forward to people, mm. potential uh, stakeholders, uh, uh, provincial, municipal, etc. Uh, that's when the, the it was the, it as a commission came into being slowly. Mm. So that's that's mm. the that's the background, very long background. So a lot of people don't know that the the the, the concept and the idea started that far back. I suppose the question also because. I spent many of my earlier years in that part of the world, and where you've built that particular sculpture, that whole land has totally transformed itself in, you know, to the museum that there is now. And how do you, as an artist, take almost that vision that you have, which was prior to the museum being built, the sculpture itself being you know, the pivotal sort of... Um, landmark that it is now, how do you take it from just this piece of land that there is, knowing that Mandela was captured at that particular point, to, to the final product that you have now? Well, that's actually, I would say, a process of learning. I, I've done a lot of uh, public work, which I call contextual, which means it's, been, it's, it's come about as a contextual response to that place. I owe a lot to uh, uh, Jeremy, um, you know, working with him for so many years, and even though I've done so many um, public works that are, were contextual responses to places, uh, Jeremy and I worked together on that project, and, and, and I really um, owe so much to his experience and knowledge of how to uh, work with the land. And, and I think I'm glad you raised that, because the, the, the sculptor's relationship to the landscape mm. and the site is such a big contributor to the impact of, of, of that work. Um, so I, when we really got to the, the production side or the, uh, getting, when we got stuck into the project, I focused a lot more on the sculpture and uh, Jeremy and I would discuss the site, but he mm. really focused on the landscape and what kind of relationship that uh, work would have to the museum. Because as you know, there's this long path that connects the yes. two, and even though the sculpture existed for many years uh, before the final museum and uh, when there was a temporary museum, the intention was always that one would embark on this so-called uh, long walk to mm. freedom. Um, so yes, you're right, the, the site is very is intrinsic to the, the, the work and I the experience. Okay. I, you know. I think that's it, it's the experience and the emotive you know, so often I've been there with different people and, you know, take, um, taken people that aren't familiar with it, um, mm. particularly overseas guests, and that um, you can suddenly see that awe on their face that suddenly when that whole sculpture sort of comes and moves into position and then they see exactly um, what it rep represents. Because as you look at it from different angles, you, you're not quite seeing it. At, uh, you have to be in the right position to pick up the, the complete sort of facade of what, what you're trying the to capture. The completed image, yes, you're right. Um, a lot of, I think a lot of my work and my public work has, has those aspects going on. And it's, it's, it's an interest of mine to um, have a kind of duality or, or tension between abstraction and mm. recognition. But also I like the idea of layering. For me, um, I have the sense that people come from different backgrounds and they have different entry points mm -hmm. and va vantage points to works or to uh, uh, acts of expression. And I, I quite like that layering. It, it, it's, it's a kind of a, uh, an endeavor to get people, a broader uh, scope of people mm -hmm. to take something away with them. And I think the sculpture is quite, uh, the whole project is quite nuanced because I can't just say the sculpture, it's the yeah. land, it's everything. And... Uh, some people take one or two things away from it. Maybe it's the recognition. For some people, yeah. uh, it's, I mean, I'm very humbled by the kind of responses I've gotten over the years. And I think for, for a lot of people, the, the deep resonance of a variety of different things. Uh, for me personally, one of the, the most significant things is the feeling of walking amongst the columns or the moment of coming into mm. being. What's really interesting of the hundreds and thousands of people that have viewed the work online, all of them have generally seen the focal view where all the um, columns line up to make the image. Yeah. And 
I don't even know how many appreciate what its spatiality actually is. Um, and people only realize that once they go to the site. The long walk to freedom for some people that, some people complain about yeah. the long walk down the hill <laughs> or up, back up the hill, but some people get it. Mm. They get, get it that they are um, doing a pilgrimage of yes. sorts. They feel that. And that, that path is marked through signs of specific events as you go down. And um, so it's really all of these things coming together. Uh, it was a very challenging site because, when, yeah. as you know that area, when, you, when we went there, it was wild, uh, mm. sort of yeah. weed-infested felt. <laughs> and you look down the hill and you kind of got the sort of, I mean, the, 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 the railway lines and the cables, and it's yeah. not necessarily the prettiest backdrop. Mm. And it was a lot of work and definitely working with Jeremy to first of all decide where to put it on the site. Uh, and it was very late in the day that we decided to push it right down to the, uh, to the bottom. There's something um, significant about the actual columns and that, and maybe you just want to share that with us, because um, it's, you, you've been very specific in terms of the number of columns and, and so on that have been used. Yes. Well, the, there are a couple of things to talk to there. When Jeremy and I came up with this concept, I immediately knew that I wanted it to be a, a very complex sculptural mm. projection. For me, if it's a flat image um, that does the same thing, it doesn't work. So I really wanted to play with that mm. to start with. So I wanted um, a sense of quantity or depth to that. Um, then the, there are 50 columns that m comprise the sculpture, and that represents the, the sculpture was uh, uh, unveiled on the f f 50th anniversary since uh, wow. Nelson Mandela's yes. capture. But it also speaks to a certain um, democracy and um, community mm -hmm. of um, many making the whole as well. It's interesting, you, one, you mentioned the 50 columns, and I, I would, for me, that's something new, you know, that I wasn't aware of, that, that very spe sort of specific number. But you also referenced um, the spatial distance between the columns and that. Is that, in a sense, um, unique or specific in terms of what you're trying to create? Well, the sculpture is, it, it, when you do large sculptural works like this, there's a lot of things you have to take on board and, and, and weigh up together. Mm. And the first most significant thing was, it's all very well to say, I want to create this image out of vertical lines, yes. fine vertical lines, but they need to be able to stand up to the forces of the elements. So then you've got to develop a unit of measure. So proportionate to the whole thing is how skinny can we get with a column? And that's a process of engineering. So that defines, uh, basically, it, it, it defines the size of your pencil in the mm. drawing, uh, your unit of measure. Um, the, the next thing is the, um, the spread of the columns. I wanted it to be quite dynamic. If you think of something like the sound of a, a burst or yes. a, a sh the firing of a gun or the rapid spreading of people. Um, I w we wanted it to have that kind of movement and that definitely advances away from you towards, mm. towards the actual point of capture across the road. The, the scale of the columns is, it's all about geometry. It's about where, when you stand, when you reach the focal point, how far away will you be from the elements, or should you be yeah. from the elements? The closer or further you are away, the, the more dr dramatic or docile the rising, the horizontal the, um, rising line will be. So it was a whole balancing of that in proportion to the site, the length of the path, what was possible in engineering and construction. I mean, it's, I'm sitting here listening as a, as a curator, and it's, you know, we often think of artists um, just as someone who has a concept in their mind, puts it onto paper or creates, you know, seldom do we actually think of, as you mentioned, it's not just a creative idea. That's one aspect of it, but it's the geometry, the math, math behind it. Then it's the engineering being able to... Yes, what you're saying sounds lovely. I wish I could be in that situation, come up with an idea, make a maquette and say, well, someone yeah. work it out. I've, I, I don't think I've ever done that. But. And for those that are familiar with the site, um, it's almost on the sort of um, 
in a sort of a valley or the strip of land. And the wind, I know when I've been there a few times, really comes gusting through that particular part of the Midlands and that. Um, those columns are not small. I mean, they're how many meters high? Uh, up to 9.5 meters. So, I mean, that's an engineering feat in itself to ensure that they remain stable uh, within that ground. And yes, and they're incredibly elastic, which the engineer knew. He said these forms are going to move about, and you, it's very rare that you find them still um, on any given day. They do flex and move, which is quite beautiful. I, I imagine annoying mm. for photographers, but it's quite beautiful <laughs> how it uh, has a slight gentle, sort of lively precariousness about it's it. It's almost like the shimmering in that, in that light, the, as you say, the it's constant due, movement yes. and that. Yes. So, I mean, it's not just creativity. I mean, for any young artist out there as well, and I think there's a lot of lessons learned as we look at the, even many of the works that Mark has done, the engineering that goes behind it, um, the geometry, the mass, and of course, the creativity to come up with a concept, and it's the, the team that's then working with you. I mean, as you said, yourself working very closely with Jeremy Rose, and that in bringing you know the best of the ideas. I can imagine some of the debates that you actually had getting up to the final product as well. Yeah, look, um, the, the, the 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 maybe it's a good thing <laughs> that the time was very. Um, uh, protracted. It always happens yeah. with these projects. You never get as much time as you would like. So after years and years of uh, pushing and promoting, then suddenly when the mm -hmm. powers that be decide, then they want it yesterday. And, and that sort of uh, protracts that process quite a bit. Um, I've actually just forgotten the beginning of your question. <laughs> <laughs> You well, were talking about all the, everything that's involved in the collaboration. In the with collaboration, the, yeah, look, yes. Look, it, it's interesting because on the one hand, uh, going, thinking back when I read, because I didn't study, I didn't um, major in sculpture. Mm. I, 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 I majored in painting and sort of stumbled into sculptural work and had to, st I had to learn how to do everything. And I have, I, mm. for most of the time, I pretty much do do everything from the design, the project management, yeah. the consulting and the logistics and so on. But I've also, there's a big collaborative aspect where I work with other professionals uh, like Jeremy and uh, numerous engineers mm -hmm. and project managers, landscape architects, and that f for a, a good portion of my career has been a, a very exciting mm -hmm. and um, exhilarating, productive experience. Mm -hmm. um, Jeremy, you know, Jeremy uh, and I met through our work, and that also for me is lovely, is when people don't just respond to what you're trying to say, yes. but what you have done uh, by mm -hmm. saying, I really like that work um, that you've done. Um, mm. To hear it from someone else and for that to be, I mean, Jer Jeremy saw one of my first sculptures at Hollard Street Mall in Johannesburg. Well, I think it was the yeah. first, second sculpture that I had made. And, and that, that modest sculpture has gone on to inform a lot of work wow. uh, and a lot uh, mm. right through to the Freedom Park. And... Uh, resonated with someone, an, an, an incredible man like Jeremy, um, and, you know, really inspired a lot mm. of things. I think that really, and thank you for that, and it leads me really to my last question, because it's interesting you, and I wasn't aware of it, um, where, as you say, you were trained more as a painter, and you sort of, you become known as a, for your sculptures, your large-scale installations, and as APSA, one of the things that we, we've supported over the last 35 years is the APSA Latelier Art Competition. Yes. Um, our focus is on identifying, nurturing young artistic talent from across the continent. And we're going to have a number of artists that are watching this. What advice would you give to any young artist that's really trying to break into the industry, trying to get their name, their brand out there? What advice would you give to them all? Well, it's funny that you you you, uh, you talk, referring to the 35 years. I think I've been uh, a, a, a large part, a part of uh, mm -hmm. a, a lot of those 35 <laughs> years actually. Because in, when I was uh, my final year at uh, at Wits, I in '92, mm -hmm. um, uh, my lecturer Clive Vandenberg suggested myself and a couple of other people to put our 
one of our artworks on mm. me, which I think it was the Volkskast Atelier then in 92, I can't remember. Correct. And as a, a final year student, my work was accepted and put on the exhibition. So my history with the Atelier goes very far back. However, the, uh, I was so chuffed about that that the, the year thereafter mm. wanted to enter again and was encouraged to enter again. And I, instead of having a, a, a pre-made work put on the show, mm. I, I dedicated myself to producing this very ambitious work to the maximum <laughs> size you could make yes. of two meters by two <laughs> meters. And it wasn't even selected for the regional. Um, because, you know, you have all the regionals Correct. in the final. I yes. didn't even make it. I was devastated. And I didn't enter the atelier for uh, what's from uh, 93 to 2001. How long is that? <laughs> That's 18 years. Eight, 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 years. Eight, eight, eight years. Eight years. I was that devastated. And then I don't know what it was, why I entered it again. Uh, sucker for punishment. I don't know. <laughs> and I, in 2001, I got a merit award. Yes. And then uh, persevered and entered... And I was getting on in years already, so I thought I was running out of time. And I entered in, in 2002 and won it. So I think that is, a, is an indication uh, of how you need to persevere to start mm. with. Um, because it's, it, you're going to get rejected at times. Um, and it's a test of your own character, I think, and your determination. Because yeah. I think you have to be very determined. The last any piece of advice I would um, give, which I would give to almost anyone, and I try and give to myself the whole time, is to try and find a, a, a workable balance between mm. listening to other people and trusting in your own instincts. Listening to other people is about learning um, and uh, pooling into all those resources out there. Trusting your mm. own instincts is about knowing when to f follow in your own direction. And that dynamic, I think, is mm. what will plague you always. It doesn't go away. Um, and, but I think it's the secret. And also try something new. I mean, you, yes, you've got uh, to if you launch into, you know, maybe as pull yourself out of your comfort zone as well and try, like as, as an artist, new mediums or new styles, etc. You know, looking at your journey over the years and where you started and where you are, are now. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've, always, I've, I'm, I've always wanted to try lots of different yes. things. I didn't want to sort of, I mean, I admire artists that, that stay within a narrow bandwidth, mm. but really explore and interrogate that area. It, but it's not who I am. Yeah. I've always wanted to sort of uh, go into lots of different directions. And the truth is, is if you're not scared, um, um, you, you're not pushing yourself, and uh, and I hate being scared. But I, yeah. I find every every project I've done, there's been times where I've just felt like I cannot, we can't do this. Yeah. It's like it's wakes you up yes. in the middle of the night, and releases an example of that. Um, um, you, you know, you, you you have to interrogate. We found mistakes. I found mistakes mm. very late in the day. That was one of the last large sculptures that I designed on a two-dimensional platform. Uh, working in 3D okay. after. So everything we did was in theory until the columns arrived mm. in, 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 in uh, the Midlands yes. and were starting to be erected. Wow. Everything about it was in theory. And I had no one to hold my hand because <laughs> I was the one steering that yes. ship and, and wasn't very good at math. So um, uh, it, was, it, was, it was stressful. Thank you. Inspirational. Thank you, Marco. Um, and... What an honor to be joined by you today. Thank no, you so thank much. No, thank you for having me. It's been great to be here. And for those that are interested in um, the work that Mark is doing and, you know, the next project, we're going to be watching to see what your next large-scale installation is going to be. Do is going to be. But um, Marco's website is, um, is on screen at the moment, so you will be able to see that. And we encourage you, please go through and have a look at that at the um, and just explore more around the works besides this release um, at the Nelson Mandela capture site. But when you are next in um, the Natal Midlands, do yourself a favor. It is an experience you will remember for the rest of your life. Do go visit um, the capture site. The museum as well is open. Um, and we do. Great. It is. It's mm, a fantastic, amazing. fantastic really, journey. Really, yeah. So. I encourage you, set a few hours aside. Don't make it a rushed journey, but really set a few hours aside and spend some time there with your family and friends at the capture site. 
Marco, thank you again. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you.